into the further we go. Hey there, Evil Dead fans. Welcome to another episode of the Ash vs. Evil Dead After Show here on After Buzz TV. Tonight, we are talking about Season 3, Episode 8, Rifting Apart. We're going to talk about Ash's trip into the unknown as he actually attempts a rescue mission. We're also going to be talking about how much fun it is fighting a deadite in a hardware store. Guys, it's going to be a lot of fun. Stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin! Ash vs. Evil Dead's musical choices are always so on point. Yeah, they're always at least songs I've heard of, because they were made before 1999. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my parents were like teenagers in the 70s, so like, all of Ash vs. Evil Dead's choices are like right in that area of like the 70s and 80s, and it's always just so good. I'm just air drumming. <laughs> I'm like, and I'm, see, I can do, like, Keep I'm doing, like, the Angus yeah. Young down here. I'm just going to air well. drum and listen to the show tonight, you guys. <laughs> well, hey there, Ash vs. Evil Dead fans. Welcome back to our after show. Yeah. Let's not waste any time. Let me introduce my fantastic panel. To my left, Lex Michael. I am Lex Michael, or at least that's what they tell me. <laughs> to his left, Lucretia Lyon. That is me, and there is only one. <laughs> and I'm Megan Salinas. Uh, guys, we are going to be keeping an eye on the hashtag ABTV Evil Dead for all of you guys on Twitter, and we're going to be keeping an eye on the live chat. Thank you, Lucretia. Yeah, we've actually got a, a rowdy chat today. I like it. We, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> lots of chat. There's a lot to talk about. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay, guys. So this was a fun episode. It was a little bit out of, kind of out of the the depth of what the show normally does, which I really appreciate. Did you guys have a highlight from tonight's episode? A favorite moment? I feel really bad for Dalton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if I would call it my favorite moment necessarily, but I certainly feel bad for it poor Dalton. It definitely left an impression, that's he, for sure. This poor dude dies horribly and then is subjugated to this terrible, like, green nether realm of, of awfulness and emptiness and soullessness and then dies again. He's technically died three times because he died once. He came back as a deadite. Uh, and then Ruby sub like uh, she suppressed the deadite to torture him for information, killed him again, and then now he's died once more in this green nether. Realm. He's died more than Buffy. <laughs> yeah, cool. nope. he's winning by one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but like right, but but the car, the car came back from wherever the little hands mm -hmm. pulled him to, and Dalton's a resilient guy, so maybe he could come back to die yet again. <laughs> yeah, remember, hashtag pray for Dalton. Just kept going because he just keeps dying but but he keeps coming back yeah keeps which means our prayers are working yeah it keeps coming back uh and then i guess evil the evil is so strong in this show they're like hey hey you're not allowed to live and be happy no stronger than our prayers we have to pray for dalton harder <laughs> yeah pray harder guys pray harder everybody um so yeah let's let's uh let's go ahead and break down this episode from the beginning Ash and Pablo hiding out right after the dance. Now, I was a little disappointed to hear that the cops were like, oh, Ash Williams, he, he did all this, he's going to pay. Because I thought Ruby, you know, with her intestines spilling out, yelling about how this messed up her evil plan and how there were two Ashes, I kind of figured that would sort of fix that situation. But I guess when there are that many dead kids uh, that, you know, one person's evil monologue isn't necessarily enough to sort of take care of that situation. See, you know what disappointed me the most <laughs> about this opening? I was disappointed in the Elk Grove Police Department because they are now, <laughs> they're, they're now hell-bent on finding Ash Williams and making him pay for the horrible things they believe that he's done. He's in that room right there. <sighs> Pablo's literally opening the blinds and looking through them. You just have to turn your head ever so slightly to the left. You got him. Talk about a Barney Fife situation right there. I mean, geez Louise, guys, come on. Like, you can't find them. Like, were you not looking in these rooms? Like, yeah. Starting to make the cops from Camp Crystal Lake look like they're on top of things, right? Yeah. I, I do like, though, that uh, perhaps an inadvertent side effect of Ruby's plan is we're essentially within Elk Grove, we're now undoing the mythology of Ash Williams' hometown hero, right? He's now in the minds of the police and probably the town at large. He's now the monster again. Yeah, it didn't take long, did it? No, no, it didn't. <laughs> Just like one bad day. Yeah. Well, bad that's day. what we do to our celebrities here. <laughs> one bad day and a pile of dead kids. That'll, that'll a pile do it, of I dead teenagers is really bad PR. 
Um, but uh, we we were touching on it last week. Uh, see, you know, the loss of Brandy actually is something that weighs heavy on Ash's conscience. So he's gone through so many losses, so many dead girlfriends, so many dead other family members, so many dead random acquaintances that you think he would be numb to it. But he was really taking a shine to Brandy and the fact that she died protecting him. It really weighs on him because he really wanted to protect her. Yeah, that, you know, as much as I love the silly, goofy stuff and everything, this was some of my favorite parts of the episode was Ash finally getting this father moment and he feels like he's failed his daughter. It was a little bit more, you know, heartwarming. Yeah, heartwarming Ash Williams is yeah. something we don't really get to see very often, but it's something that's oddly touching in what's otherwise a very silly slapstick gory fun show yes. slash franchise uh those those real moments of heart are are few and far between but when they hit they hit really hard you're ratcheting up the emotional stakes giving ash something to fight for that is deeper than let's just kick evil in the ass and <sighs> giving bruce campbell something a little bit deeper to play and like we've talked before about how every single time they allow him to play something a little bit more emotional he crushes it but the character of ash doesn't necessarily lend itself to too many of those scenarios so yeah it's incredible especially as it seems like we're building towards some type of uh resolution to the story perhaps yeah to see something truly like uh something affect his heart and that's what motivates him that's exciting i oh go ahead oh i was just gonna say in the chat here abk88 says it was sweet is bruce a dad in real life and it's like yes he is i think that's why he's liking to play this storyline and then christian uh stolieski says i love ash more feeling i like that yeah <laughs> <laughs> love more feeling ash but the i i agree with both of you on that the I, I don't want this show to end necessarily. I know it's questionable whether or not we're going to get another season. A lot of people are saying, hey, guys, please support Ash vs. Evil Dead on Stars. Let them know that you want this show to continue because right now uh, it, it there hasn't been any word yet. And I don't want this show to end, but if it ends with Ash Williams having grown as a person... I don't think that's necessarily a bad note to end on. Well, and when we talked to Dana, uh, you know, earlier this year, she was talking about like they they know that it's a possibility that it could end and it does have an ending. So and we're actually seeing this character grow with the bash. But, you know, and that this really would be the end, because according to Bruce on an article I read, he said that he just wants to lay around and smoke weed and tend his garden. And now he wouldn't be interested in playing Ash again. Yeah, and so yeah. it does seem like if this is the end, this is the end. And we've arguably, right, if Ash does fully step into the role as it seems to be, into the role of supportive father, really owning the patriarch role that he's he's been pushed into gradually over the course of this show, we will have seen Ash taken in the to the two places that I least expected to see him go, right? One is we saw this episode, we saw Ash die. He came back but he died. The other would be seeing Ash truly grow up. And hey, if you want to grow in all areas of your life while also having fun and maybe learning a thing or two, we've got a podcast for you. Conversations with Maria Menounos podcast edition is hosted by our AfterBuzz TV founder, and it drops every Friday on iTunes. Conversations with Maria Menounos features celebrity and influencer interviews, along with secrets and tips on how to be better in all aspects of life, from health and wellness to career, relationships, finances, and more. Let our Maria be the big sister you've always wanted. Just go to iTunes and subscribe to Conversations with Maria Menounos for free. Be sure to rate and comment, and when you do, let Maria know it was the folks at ABTV e Ash vs. Evil Dead who sent you there. Conversations with Maria Menounos Podcast Edition. Check it out. As a fan of Maria's books, I know how much you can learn from her. It's nice to have a free weekly podcast to learn even more. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and guys, just from a purely sort of selfish uh, thing on on our part um it really means a lot that maria has given us a platform where we can talk about how much we love the show how much we enjoy seeing the lore of the necronomicon and the world in general grow with this franchise and how much we love seeing ash 
grow as a character and learn to care about other people. None of that would be possible if it wasn't for Maria's support. 100%. So it really means the world to us when you guys show support to the people who support us. So you're saying that Ash subscribed to Conversations with Maria, and maybe that's part oh, of his character growth. He subscribed, yeah. left a five-star comment. Uh, he thinks the world of it. He said it's <laughs> groovy. It taught him all about how to run a business, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Ashy Slashy's um, sex toy emporium and hardware store is all thanks to Marie Menounos. Again, Ash absolutely needs a podcast. Yes. Like... I know. I'd subscribe <laughs> to that, too. No, we talked about the Ash Williams Freddy Krueger podcast. Yep. No. Yep. Mm -hmm. He absolutely needs it. Um. So, yeah, to your point, Lex, this is, I, I think this is the pinnacle of, um, in terms of character growth, I think this is the most we've seen from Ash because he has always been a character hell-bent on surviving whatever crazy situation he's in. In Army of Darkness, he became the person who would run from danger to the person who faced danger. But this is the first time he's ever been willing to throw his life away for the sake of someone else he's never done that before and so i i feel like this is a new a new plateau for him in terms of character development yeah ash never really puts anyone above himself and this was the first time we saw that and it was so sweet he was like oh i'll just kill myself all right <laughs> like just... not gonna lie i think this show makes me laugh quite a bit but I don't think I've laughed as hard watching this show as I did the moment uh, they're getting ready to stab himself with a Kandarian dagger. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we get to the point of two and a half and Pablo yeah. yelling three. three. <laughs> I was just proud of Pablo for doing that. I was a little worried he wasn't going to be able to handle it. I will say, though, like, yes, agree with you completely that that sequence was hilarious. But I found something weirdly disturbing about, like, because Ash Williams has been notoriously indestructible as long as he has existed. To see him him off so easily just one little yeah, granted to the, heart, to the heart to the heart but so quickly in one quick motion one stab motion and that's it something about that was profoundly disturbing well to me. i think part of that is, one you sort of expect the kandarian dagger to just bounce right off of him because he's he's ash yeah. um i think part of what your discomfort is coming from though is we love pablo and pablo is so sweet and wonderful and we we've talked a lot about him being this wonderful medium because of his pure heart um, this wonderful gray area in terms of like the darkness that encompassed him, but his goodness sort of shining through with that. I think part of your discomfort with that might come from the fact that this was essentially the living embodiment of the Necronomicon killing Ash. Ooh. Oh. Ugh. Maybe. <laughs> and the book did ruin his life or make it better because while you run around killing demons, you're El Jefe. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Or El Brujo Especial. Yeah. Um, before before we get into the further, really quickly, I want to talk to you guys about iTunes. Uh -huh. Folks, thank you so much. We talked about iTunes earlier, but folks, thank you so much to everybody who's gone to our iTunes page to rate and leave a comment. We love hearing from you. And is the best way to let our aforementioned producers know that you guys like the show that we're putting on. And if you do leave a comment, you might even get a shout out on the show. Yeah, like Mark WNH here says five stars, evil good. Goodness. Just stumbled upon this awesome podcast. Love the panel each week. They are great. One of the ladies has an unusual, adorable laugh, and I love it. Keep it up. I believe that both of these ladies have an unusual, <laughs> adorable laugh, and we're just going to let you know that we believe it's both of us, right? I yeah. concur with that assessment. I think they might be that. talking about me, in which yeah. case, rude. <laughs> Lex is Beck's best girl. Mm. Mm. I, I do call him that sometimes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so to get back. So yes, Ash gets killed. Uh, but, and he ends up in the rift. Uh, I've been calling it the further, but it's not necessarily the further because as, as we sort of discussed last week, we discussed the possibility that this was a specific pocket dimension specifically against those who had been killed by the Kandarian dagger or who died in some sort of deadite related incident. Uh, and guys, we have to talk about how creepy this place is. And I, I wanted to get your guys' take on 
this sort of nether realm that we find ourselves in in this episode. In the chat, we had a really good comment earlier, so I'm going to scroll back up here. It's Renji90998 says, um, since Kelly and the others were basically in the upside down world, I'm calling the <laughs> shadow creature the sh uh, shadow gorgon. <laughs> and I was just like, yes, it's exactly like Stranger Things. And that's cool, though. There was a lot of good callbacks, and it was a lot, uh, this was a lot like Drag Me to Hell, like that movie. Yeah, yeah. with the hands yeah. pulling you down. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. Um, another Sam Raimi movie. Yeah. So that's actually kind of cool if that was sort of where this shadow creature was inspired by. Yeah. That guy's scary. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I like looking at this. Um, it's hard for me not to think of like it being a legion of demons of some sort. Yes. Like this is. It's hard to say. Like, is this just one of the dark ones? And like each dark one just is like comprised of a legion of lost souls. I, I wonder. Right. I always pictured the dark ones bigger. <laughs> I That's guess. what she said. Well, I'm almost, I'm almost wondering, right? I'm almost wondering because, oh God, because, right? They terrible, just <laughs> terrible. You're fired. Um, <laughs> the, the, um, no, like I, uh, because they were able to just they were they drove through it, right? Because the the what I think is some type of projection of a dark one or something else, right? Because it didn't really interact with anything. It was just there. It looked scary. It definitely seemed to be connected to the hands in some way, but they just drove through it and it dissolves. I'm wondering if that's more a projection of something else than it is an entity itself. So you're thinking that this isn't actually a dark one. It this could maybe just be like their avatar. Maybe. I, I could be wrong, but in my head, they were no, no, a little taller, a little taller than that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Tall. He was pretty tall, but I mean, like, I mean, like Titan tall, not like oh. NBA tall. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's. Hmm. Yeah, maybe this isn't a dark one at all. We don't really know what this is. I guess they never told us how big they were. Well, no, this could just be another, a different type of demon. This right. could be a creature that is relegated to this nether space. Right. Yeah, I think they're just like basically like soul suckers or like sin eaters basically they you know are feeding off these lost souls here is what it seemed like to me but yeah christian uh stoleski in the chat says feel like felt a little like hellraiser a i like that bit. Uh. one of us, one of us. <laughs> but we've established right that there are like middle management demons of sorts in this universe so it's also possible that Pen all of those pencil hands, pushers right, like all of those hands are the mm -hmm. lower demons right they're the cubicle workers and the the shadow thing is the office manager if the hero kills a hundred demons i'd be the forgettable what was it like 39 <laughs> uh the evil dead musical there's yeah. um uh, gosh, what was the name of the song? The, there's a deadite that sings uh, an entire number about being a really forgettable demon. Uh, okay, yes. <laughs> this vaguely rings a bell to me. It's great. It's wonderful. I should give it another listen sometime soon. But um, uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting because I'm looking at this shadow creature and I'm wondering if it, you, you brought up like a soul sucker, or like a sin eater. I'm thinking like maybe it's just like some sort of spiritual black hole. Like, and it just consumes any and all spirits in, like, the nearby vicinity. I don't know. It seems like they're, like, the, the rules of space and time are sort of malleable within it since the Charger was able to drive out of it um, and break through the ground. But I don't know. I, I would assume that because it didn't want to be hit by Ash, that it is, ta it is possible to damage this thing. Well, the Delta survives everything. <laughs> can we can we take a minute to appreciate the Delta in in this nether realm? Oh yeah. Well, when he's like, "Yeah, you were made in Livonia, Michigan," and I was like, "So was Mike Madonna, and he's the greatest American hockey player, guys. Livonia, Michigan. They know how to make him." What we need is to throw him through the rift. Problem solved. Exactly. Hat trick. Evil is vanquished. Thank you for knowing another hockey term. That's like the one I got. Yeah, okay. That and puck. Sports. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Sports are great. <laughs> Sports references that we all understand. I'm sorry, guys. It's playoffs. No, that's awesome. <laughs> no, that's yeah. awesome. Sports good. Good. <laughs> All right. Um, but no, I, I kind of, I'm wondering if the reason that Ash was able to bring the Delta back to life is whether or not the Delta getting possessed last season 
infused it with some sort of supernatural, like, residual energy of some sort. And, and I will say, the best shows on television have, like, an awesome classic car. I mean, and I'm not just talking about Knight Rider. I'm talking about the Delta and then Baby, the Impala on um, Supernatural. These cars are magical. Why do we not make them like that anymore? Because you know, I mean, the Blueberry on Psych and the Nerd Herder little vehicle are the only little cars I've ever seen go through a lot of stuff. But that was really pushing it. Now, I know these, you know, there's, I believe, more in Deadites than... Michigan Steel being destroyed. Now, uh. here's the thing uh, in terms of that, that theory about them making cars like this anymore. American-made cars up through the 1970s actually were made with magic. And there's yep. just no magic in the world anymore, Lucretia. So American-made cars don't have them anymore. See, I'm just well. thinking about applying this theory to all shows <laughs> and imagining a world in which Tony Soprano had a talking SUV. <laughs> I'm loving it. Fake. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the best. Um, but yeah, uh, sorry, that's sort of a, just an, it's probably nothing. It's probably just Ash's presence and mm. sheer force of will that I'm wondering if maybe because he's the chosen one, he's able to manipulate this nether space in a way that no other person can. Sure. Yeah, let's go with that. That sounds like a really good theory. <laughs> and like, look, yes, if we can headcanon this about 10 different ways, right? And I could also totally buy, because the car has gone through portals before, the car has gone through time once or twice, it might have picked up some juju along the way, right? And that maybe allowed it to become demonically possessed in the first place, which maybe like open that door a little further. I don't know. Magic, you guys. <laughs> yeah, magic. That's how you solve every problem. If, you, if someone asks you how that happened, just go, magic. To borrow a Lucy Lawless quote from a different show, every yeah. time you see something like that, a wizard did it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, something I really appreciated in this nether space um, you brought up Dalton and hashtag pray for Dalton. Poor guy. Yeah. Um, and we're seeing the souls of a lot of lost kids from the dance running around in this nether space. But who is still up and kicking around? Kelly and Dalton. Yes. They are, are still swinging and they managed to catch up with Brandy and keep her safe in the in the celestial or spiritual equivalent of the bar where Kelly works. Right. Um, which it, it's, as she points out, nothing in this nether space works in the way that it does in the real world, which again brings up the question of why Ash was able to get the charger to work. But seeing the three of them come together and seeing still how devoted Dalton is to protecting the chosen one and his family and Kelly. Like it was, like the second he reappeared, I got really excited. And then I went, oh, oh no, yeah. this means he can die again. Oh no. <laughs> you know, I feel like this is basically one big metaphor that chivalry really is dead. Mm. It's died three times now. <laughs> it's dead three times over. Um, he even, he even kneels and he's like one for all and all for one. And it's like, no, even after, even after being killed and tortured and <laughs> brought back and possessed by a demon and killed again, he still has that knightly nobility and thinks to kneel in front of Ash. He's a really like, good knight. He's a good knight. Oh, oh he's Dalton. He's a sweet boy. And that's why it feels so, and par partially too, like he kisses Kelly, of course, before he makes his grand sacrifice. So this is operating on multiple, multiple layers of motivation for him. But yeah, this poor dude. And I thought too, like, oh, he's going to face off with the shadow thing. His whole plan was to distract the big, tall shadow monster. And instead, no, nope, poor dude just gets pulled into a hole by the little hands. Yeah. Although, I again, I appreciate a character who, you know, says F you as they get dragged yeah. down to hell. Uh, you know, you have to hand it to Dalton. And there's the, the show makes an odd point about cutting to various shots of the other lost souls that are in this nether realm as Ash and crew, you know, get the car to work and then they make their escape. They make a weird point of like cutting to the other kids that are still around, that are still alive, quote unquote, <laughs> um, that haven't been consumed by the creature yet. And I'm wondering 
if that's sort of hinting at like, well, maybe there's a way to save all these lost souls. Yeah. I kept thinking throughout the episode, like once we established that these other kids were there, once we established that we could go and come back and put souls back in the bodies, I started thinking, man, if we'd figured this out sooner, we could have saved a lot of people by not obliterating <laughs> their bodies before we put them back inside. It reminds me of the South Park Halloween episode where everybody's like zombies or they think they're zombies but really they just got embalming fluid you know in the Worcestershire sauce or whatever and it's just like you know it's like whatever you do don't go around chopping up bodies and they're like okay because they were already doing that and it's just like yep so apparently they just need to call a hotline and it'll tell them just don't do that maybe you can save these people yeah, to be fair, they didn't necessarily have the tools to start saving all the random civilians that were killed in their wake. Sure, and in containing deadites is notoriously difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, prior, like, I, I'd say that, like, even in, in the other movies that, like, the other examples of a person getting rid of a deadite, Ash. Right. And then Sheila, and that's it. Yep. Um, up until the reboot and getting, you know, freeing Mia was a was a heck of an ordeal. Yeah, it was a bit of a process. <laughs> that 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 involved a whole thing. So um, it's interesting knowing that it is a reversible process, but knowing what goes into it, it's it's daunting. It is very very complicated. Plus, like you need, I feel you need the right combination of people, right? Like unless you've got somebody like Ash who's willing to go in there, who knows how to face off with these things and survive. And unless you have somebody like Pablo, and not any Pablo, Brujo Especial Pablo, <laughs> you can't really get through that door in the first place. Yeah, exactly. You can't open up the rift if you don't have a Pablo. Right. So talking about that, do we have any final thoughts on the sort of rift side of things before we switch gears and start talking about Pablo and his misadventures? Um, I guess the last thing would be we have to leave Kelly behind. Yeah, Which, and I like that this was idea, heartbreaking. But I like the idea too, as an extension of we can put your soul back in your body. We can't put Kelly back in her body because something else is using it. Yeah. And that final moment where she says they're gone, and she says, "Bye, Ash." Yeah, and it like mm -hmm. cuts to black before she says it too. Like, ugh. I, yeah, really, I get mm, really effective. I have I have fears and concerns. Yeah, that's the thing is um we can't lose Kelly. She's the best. Um, and I think even I I like how Ash was. He's like, no, we leave no, Ghost Peters leave no man behind. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Except for all of the civilians and all of your previous friends and, and family. girlfriends. <laughs> and family. Well, they weren't they ghost, ghost, ghost beaters. Yeah. yeah, they weren't ghost beaters. It's they not retroactive, <laughs> you know. Which is from yeah. ghost beaters forming forward. But again, I think that says a lot about like how he, who he is as a person now. He yes. goes from the person who has to, you know kill the remnants of his friends and family to stay alive to being the person who's willing to die for the people that he loves and then say and then not accept it when he wasn't able to save one of them say no this isn't how it works we don't leave anyone behind which is not what the old ash would do so oh no he finally he finally realized that the way we're gonna win is not by destroying what we hate but by saving <laughs> what we love they last jedi'd us they quietly last jedi'd they us you guys well wow. done, Lex. Oh, that was beautiful. Yeah. Up top. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Yep. <laughs> that was fabulous. After my way inappropriate joke, and that we, that is it. We can't <laughs> say anything. Yep. <laughs> well, okay, let's talk about Pablo in this episode because he's yes. still he's still reeling from not only Kelly dying, but also Brandy dying, and now the all of the authorities are after them. Um, and then about probably 10 minutes after they, they steal a coroner's van, um, he has to kill Ash Oof. because Ash can't do it and he can't do it. And so they end up having to do it together. Um, but then he's not sure what to do while Ash is in the rift. And then the body bag that they brought in thinking it was Brandy <laughs> suddenly looks very, very empty. Whoops. And what we get is a Deadite showdown 
in Ash Williams Hardware Store. And guys, I don't know about you, but I was so fixated on the idea of deadites at the dance and demons at the dance that it didn't even occur to me. It didn't occur to me <laughs> that we could have a deadite fight scene in a hardware mm -hmm. store. Mm -hmm. oh. and, and that's literally the only thing cooler may have been the colon and the sperm bank. But hardware store has the best desk. Like, oh my god, I was like, when the paint shaker was yes. my favorite thing because I'm like, I wouldn't have even thought of that. Right. Like, like we had a similar scene at the end of the theatrical cut of Army of Darkness, but that was different. That yes. was not with buzz saws and yeah. drills and hammers everywhere. This, like, the only thing, in my opinion, that could have made this scene better is if they implemented more of the sex emporium into this. Oh, mess. yeah, we definitely should have had dildos, guys. <laughs> Missed opportunity. Definitely should have. You can apply yeah. that across any, it is yep. all areas, all philosophies, all, yeah, but I loved, I loved that kill as well. I also really enjoy that Pablo just voluntarily stands there and gets sprayed with blood. I feel like that says a lot about where this dude is at now. Nope. <laughs> He's been through quite a bit. He's yeah. like, I died. I got possessed by a demon. Uh, I've lost the girl that I love after we kissed that one time and it was great. Yeah. Girl I love has been possessed. Uh, I just killed El Jefe. <laughs> like, that's a thing that happened. Right. So I'm, not, I'm not worried about losing this shirt, yeah. you know? And now this deadite can't even get my name right? <laughs> yeah, Modelo Especial. Because that's Please. actually what I always think of whenever I hear El Brujo Especial. <laughs> because I like beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's, it's fun, too, to see, like undead prom attire too yeah because yeah. um even though we had uh the dance last episode we didn't see a ton of kid deadites running around it was mostly the ash demon going to town which was fantastic but we didn't get to see a lot of the kids turning into deadites and so i feel like this was like oh yeah like we had kids dressed up in prom prom gear let's go ahead and have like a kid prom deadite right yeah. Yes. Hardware just, fighting. Yeah, so you're still thinking about a prom theme, guys. Dead eye. Yeah. Ooh. I would go. Yeah. I was like, I would go to that prom, except no, I wouldn't because I'm old. And that's. <laughs> it sounds yeah. really exhausting because obviously, right, presu presumably wouldn't be real deadites, but it would be a bunch of kids in prosthetic, heavy prosthetic makeup running around screaming. <laughs> and that would be it. That would be the whole prop for hours. It would be exhausting. Or just shambling like back yeah. and forth to the music. <laughs> That's true. What do deadites do if there are no people? Like, you know how like uh, most zombie stories, right? You see how they behave when they have no people to feed on. They just wander around aimlessly. Do deadites just like hang out making each other laugh? I assumed that they like hang out in little cliques and bicker like old married couples. Gossip about each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they act like regular teenagers. Well, <laughs> my my roommate and I have a theory that anytime we go into steady cam mode and it's a deadite going through the woods, that they're actually multiple deadites going through the woods together and they're arguing about whether or not they should have asked for directions <laughs> no i'm insisting i'm going the right way we should have been at the cabin by now what's wrong with you that's sort of that's sort of where our head can is at i like it i like that a combo of that and then the lower demons griping about the middle management demons and the middle management demons griping about the upper management demons and so on yeah without any humans to terrorize Deadites are oddly human. Yeah, it turns yeah. it just evolves immediately into the most <laughs> mundane bureaucracy you can think of. <laughs> yep. The <Demon> bureaucracy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We are on a roll tonight, guys. I don't know uh, what it is. Is it because of all of you in the chat here? Aaron Ventura, ABK88, Ringy90998, Yuka Nore, um, Bart Allen, Leslie S. We're just going to shout out you guys because we keep going way off topic. You guys yeah. are fabulous. Yeah. Um, okay, do we have any final thoughts on the Pablo side of the story uh, before we switch gears and talk about our missing night? Um... Pablo's been through some shit, man. <laughs> yeah, he has. Like every every year when we try and get secrets out of Ray, when we talk to him, he's always just like, I can't, all I can tell you is Pablo's seen some shit. He's going to see some shit. He's always right. Yeah. 
The uh, although it's it's nice to see him as a character go from not necessarily being a damsel in distress, uh, but being a character that because of the situation that we're in, you know, needs to be saved or, you know, hasn't quite learned to fend for himself yet, hasn't learned to master his abilities. It's cool getting to see a character like that just take down a demon. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. really fun just to see him go, oh, okay, no one's here to help me, no Kelly, no Ash. Okay, cool, that's fine. Watch as I put this Deadite's head into a paint shaker and shake it until its insides come out. Yes. So, all in all, fantastic. Lucretia, any final thoughts? Um, no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't think of anything that wasn't appropriate. So, so <laughs> yes, let's talk about the fact that when they finally get down to the cellar, they notice that Zoe, the knight who is supposed to be hanging out and keeping watch, she's gone. And it's not until the end of the episode where we find out where she went. Turns out she had a run-in with Kaya and has been kidnapped and dragged to where Ruby is at. And Kaya is under the impression that, oh, we're done for. Yeah. The, we betrayed the Dark Ones. They're going to be coming and they're going to destroy us first and foremost. Ruby seems a little bit more optimistic. I just feel like... At a certain point, don't you go, like, once you realize Zoe's missing, don't you look at each other and go, man, how have we not learned this lesson? <laughs> <laughs> when someone's on Dead Eye Watch, you do not leave them completely by themselves for extended periods of time. This keeps happening. Well, Ash can only have so much character growth in an episode. <laughs> I mean, well, come on. To be fair, Ash was not there when uh, when Pablo made the discovery that Kelly was dead. Sure. Yeah. So I don't know what the alternative would have been. Maybe just lock the cellar door? Right. And I understand we got to make a lot of big decisions on the fly. So maybe, you know, some things slip through the cracks. But man... Well, maybe it also, because she and her cohorts are so oddly inexperienced, maybe that was what Pablo thought was, like, the best place for the for her to be. It's just like, how about you just watch this wall right. and yeah. make sure nothing happens to the wall. <laughs> right. Don't, if the wall does anything weird, you come and tell me. <laughs> yeah, Knights of, Knights of Samaria, strangely, not as good as the Ghost Beaters. No. No. Nah, no. Nah. Nah. Uh, they've got, their hearts are in the right place. Right. Yeah. To be fair, I think the Ghost Beaters have had a lot more practice recently. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel like the uh, the Knights of Sumeria, as as we see, they're very book smart, and they, they get the theory of uh, fighting demons, and their Latin is flawless. Uh <laughs> yeah, you know, this is a prime example of all the education in the world doesn't make up for good old hard work and experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the the Knights of Sumeria are like Buffy season three Wesley, and the Ghost Beaters are like Angel season five Wesley. <laughs> oh man, and that Wesley's hot. <laughs> <laughs> rogue, I'm Wesley Wyndham Price, rogue demon hunter. <laughs> Sorry, Wesley was kind of a nerd in Buffy season three, but then get in Ghost Beater territory. Yep. Yep. Fast forward. Uh, couple seasons and then move over to yep. another show and fast forward a couple seasons of that show and yeah you become a badass yeah. so That's how i'm doing it <laughs> so <laughs> poor zoe for whatever reason ruby seems to think she can use zoe to somehow rewrite their destiny now the last time she got really excited uh she it was because she found a vessel for kaya in the form of kelly yes is there maybe a potential another ally that we haven't met yet, haven't seen yet, or that maybe there's been some subtle foreshadowing with that they can use Zoe as a vessel for? Yeah, and that's what I kind of wonder if maybe they're not going to try to make this a trio. And I don't think it's going to be like somebody like Ball. I think it will be like a new... Um, maybe another female, uh, kind of lower Damien. tier yeah. demon, um, kind of, kind of ranking where, where he was at, uh, they need the, the quirky one I'm at just this like, point. we need a PA. Let's yeah. get, let's get a demon PA in here. We'll use her. Yeah. You know, you we know, just need someone to pick up the slack. Yeah. That's how we're going to rewrite our destiny. We're very busy. Exactly. They need the quirky, funny girl, like to complete this little scenario with the three. We need an office coordinator. Yeah. And you'll just be a jack of all trades. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So, yeah, uh, what do we think that she, I mean, that might not be it. It could just be that they need a, a human sacrifice for a particular ritual uh, within the Necronomicon. Could be anything. Could be. I have I have a thought. I have one thought about that. Yes. Well, Go my, with it. My one thought would be right like we know that Ruby is, has broken off from the rest of the 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 dark ones, this old order of demons. Presumably they don't like that kind of thing and presumably she's got to watch her back against them just as much as she wants to antagonize everything else essentially it could be a way to completely flip the script on them she may be looking to destroy them right for entirely for her own means and i feel like it's just a shortcut to get there yeah i mean if you end up destroying the dark ones then you don't have to watch your back anymore no then you're no. the dark ones man you're the dark no. one <laughs> and Everyone then the world is yours mm. as long as you can get rid of ash which he's like a cockroach he's very yeah. persistent <laughs> Um, so that's an interesting thought, and uh, I feel like that's a good point to go ahead and start talking about some predictions for next week. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. So it looks like next week, based on the preview. Oh, yeah. Oh, that preview. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it really does feel like series finale sort of territory. I know we... We get 10 episodes this season, right? Yes, which means we have uh, approximately one full hour of Evil Dead left. And if the show doesn't come back, that means we have one full hour of mm. Evil Dead left forever. I, I can't handle that. Up until they decide to, to reboot the franchise again. Right. <laughs> yeah. And they get like some hot Disney Channel star to play <laughs> Ash Williams. <laughs> I or, can dig uh, Zach Efron or somebody. Or they Ash, get like the they get like the Spider Man kid. They're trying to put him in everything now. <laughs> Tom Holland. Tom yeah, yeah, yeah. They try to get the Spider Boy. Oh. Yeah. I don't think Tom Holland would be Ash. He's like so cute and innocent. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine like no. Tom Holland next to Bruce Campbell, like no. and like. Just like, say we get a season four and we get Tom Holland just as a character in this show. That would just be absolutely precious. It would be funny. That's all he does. He does Spider-Man and then he does that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, it looks like we're kind of getting into series finale territory. Now, at, at the very end of the promo, we see a dark mass rising up. Is that this weird Legion dark dark soulsian uh, creature that we saw in the rift or is that a dark one or yeah both of those things here's the Could thing be. right like i almost don't care what it is i'm just glad it's big yeah like yeah. we you i think we were talking last week about how much we wanted to see ash fight something the size of what he's fighting on like the, on key the poster art. Yeah. yeah this is this looks pretty big that looks like that might be it. That, looks that really might large. be the thing. And it really does feel like if you're going to go, if if you may be making your final statement with these characters in this universe, go go as big as possible, yes, in terms of the scale, the scope, but also in terms of the emotional stakes. And they've been building and building both all season. And oh, Yeah, that promo, I was just like... Yeah. Go big or go home. Yeah, I mean, and, and that is exactly what this show would do. And I feel like we are going to get it. And hopefully we do get another season. But I do have a little quick uh, news and gossip sort of Ooh. thing. Because, yeah. After Buzz TV yeah. News. Do tell. So I tweeted Bruce Campbell because last week when I wasn't here, my brother and I watched the show together. And there was, uh, yeah, Ash's ass was in it. And then my brother's like, there's no way that's Bruce Campbell's butt. Like, no way. So I tweeted him, asking him, was that his butt or was it a double? And he said, and I quote, his butt was too young looking, so they had to go with a double. <laughs> yeah. All right. So good, I thought good I'd know. add that little tidbit. After Buzz yeah. TV exclusive yep. from Lucretia Lyon. Well done. That is hard-hitting journalism. That's yep. the journalism that we're here That's for. That's what we do here, guys. <laughs> well, I think that just about does it. Uh, do we have any final thoughts? You one, look like one, you like, one like tiny last prediction. My my concern, with that final moment with Kelly in this episode where they're gone and she says, bye, Ash. I, I would be truly shocked if Kelly and Pablo don't have at least one final big moment, even if it's from separate sides of a rift. I don't know that I wholeheartedly believe that she... Makes sees it. Ash again. Oh. 
Uh, well, I predict that Lex will cry if that happens. I predict yeah. Lex will cry no matter yeah. what happens. Mm -hmm. I'm reasonably, yeah. I'm reasonably sure that if we keep going in the vein that we're going, I'm gonna at least two tier, two tier single track. Yeah. I don't think the show has ever made me cry. Um, I mean, anybody who watched the after show, correct me if I if I've said that there was a moment that made me cry before. I, I don't think that the Evil Dead franchise has ever made me cry. If Kelly dies, I think I'd cry. Mm -hmm. I I know because she's my fave, but the, I've cried a few times on this show from laughing. So hard. Yeah, that's like, different. In, but <laughs> it's a little different. Yeah. But anyway, I'm hoping I'm wrong. I've always been wrong on my predictions, so maybe this is totally just an insurance policy. But like that's that was my concern coming off of that moment. Yeah. Whatever the case, it looks like it's they're racking up the stakes quite a bit. It's looking pretty serious. But anyway, thank you guys so, so much for joining us. Lucretia, where can people go if they want to find you? Since I'm Lucretia Lyon, guys, you can always find me at L-A-C-R-E-T-I-A-L-Y-O-N anywhere on the internet since there is only one. And I have my own horror show. It's called The Red Room. It's your horror news source. It is on YouTube iTunes, Podbean, and uh, I believe Google Play. So it's at a lot of places. You can watch, you can listen, just we have new episodes every Thursday, and I do ask a lot of hard-hitting questions, like I did to Bruce Campbell there. Like at WonderCon, I ask people who they'd rather, Freddy or Jason. Just fun stuff like that, and also sometimes I give you some fun facts and news. But yeah, I do that with uh, my co-host, Chauncey K. Robinson, but I have my own podcast as well, Mrs. Brightside, that can be found in all those same places, except for YouTube, because I like to do that without makeup on <laughs> i feel like jason would be more tender yeah that i picked him because i like hockey and he's really tall <laughs> uh, i am all over social media at the lex michael i also do a podcast with tari j miller it's called missing out it is about art culture experiences how those things shape the people that we become and why they resonate with us the way that they do it is the retrospective that's introspective you can find it wherever podcasts can be located itunes stitcher google play podbean episodes drop every tuesday and little bite size missing out monday episodes drop every monday in your itunes feed also follow us on twitter at missing outcast we love you Mwah. uh yeah like thinking about it mm, I, I love freddy but i'm gonna have to go with jason too yeah i feel like he would be I feel like he would be more giving. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> anyway, I'm Megan Salinas. You guys can tweet at me at the Menguin. That's T-H-E-M-E-N-G-U-I-N. I got a bunch of stuff coming up. Just follow me on Twitter. It's good times all around. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. We will see you all next week. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Cheers, you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 